Welcome, folks. This is a um, two-hour Flex presentation in which uh, my colleagues and I will attempt to show you how to get started with TaskStream. And I do mean started. We're not going to show you the whole system. We're just going to show you some really important preliminary work that you can all do in the comfort of your own office. Or uh, if you have a laptop, you can do it at home as well. For part of my initial 15-minute presentation, I have a mercifully brief PowerPoint presentation just so we can set the context of this uh, software system and uh, hopefully try to explain uh, what we're mapping to and why we're mapping at all. So I'm going to just speed through this. Uh, about six years ago, um, MESA pretty much started our work with um, student learning outcomes, and we started from the top. That is, uh, we adopted our institutional outcomes, sometimes called degree outcomes, sometimes called AA outcomes, sometimes called college outcomes. These six outcomes are the outcomes for the entire college. There is uh, uh, some verbiage underneath these. I'm just going to um, tell you that this is the first level of outcomes here at MESA. And uh, as I said, we can, uh, um, you, you can easily find out a little bit more definitions by going online. Uh, along with the development on, and uh, inception of those college outcomes, institutional outcomes, we have what was called the Genesis Statement. Uh, uh, an often wise and eloquent statement that uh, talked about Mesa's philosophy with student learning outcomes. And um, I just wanted to um, remind you that this is also a matter of record. This is also Mesa's policy. And especially what's important to me is that this last little uh, quotation, judgments about quality are complex and must be based on a range of factors, uh, not necessarily on narrow definitions of student learning or excessively standardized measures of student achievement. I think I can speak for everybody. Nobody wants standardization. This is, that's not the idea of this uh, uh, whole enterprise. The next level down in this uh, educational cosmology, if you will, are general education uh, outcomes, general education requirements. That's the definition of what general education means in the state of California. And this is the definition of general education courses straight from Title V. And what we've done is basically uh, pillaged the language that was already in uh, <coughs> Title V, uh, describing the different categories of general education. I'm showing you the one for natural sciences here. And all we did, really, at MESA to develop our general education outcomes is use this language that already existed and turn them into outcome language, if you will. So that at the end of natural science courses, students will be able to do these three or four things. Um, and that's how we came up with the general education outcomes for the four categories. Here are the ones for social and behavioral science, humanities, and the fourth category is language and rationality. Um, I don't want to give you the impression that this was easy. I mean, this, this took uh, about three, four months, really wordsmithing back and forth and going around to the other colleges in the district. Miramar had to sign off on it. City had to sign off on it. But uh, as a result, we have also general education outcomes. We're going one more level down to the various departmental outcomes or discipline outcomes. This took up a lot of our work over um, the last year. And uh, basically, I just wanted to show you this is right on the MESA um, homepage. You can go to uh, instruction. Here are all of the departments and disciplines. And you'll see that if you click on any of them, for example, biology, you see the student learning outcomes for biology. If you go to my discipline, English, 
you see the student learning outcomes for English. These are also published in the catalog. And um, that's the third level, if you will, of our educational cosmology. And when it comes time to assess those departmental outcomes, whatever department or student service area or administrative unit you are a part of, you will have to determine what those outcomes really mean for the separate classes. So I wanted to just show you a rubric from my department, uh, English. Uh, this is one of our departmental outcomes, rhetorical awareness. And when it comes time for uh, teachers to assess that outcome in this particular class, English 205, we will need a rubric. Uh, and the criteria for the rubric will um, tell us what we're looking for if students um, exceed the expectations for our rhetorical awareness or meet them or don't meet them. This is the simplest kind of rubric. Sometimes you see them uh, uh, one, two, three, four, and they're all numerical. Uh, rubrics can assume a lot of different shapes. The reason why I'm showing you this one is that the criteria that you adopt in your departments are your course outcomes. And that is the fourth level of these outcomes. Remember, we started all the way at the institution, general education, departmental, and then the course outcomes. Why is it important to know all of those four outcomes? Because Ladies and gentlemen, we only assess one time. We don't assess departmental outcomes. We don't assess general education outcomes. We don't assess institutional outcomes. We assess at the course level. And through that assessment, through that assessment, we map up to the departmental outcomes, to the general education outcomes, to the institutional outcomes. We assess one time and one time only at the course level. And that's why these rubrics are important, so that you can have actual course outcomes. Because, for example, critical thinking is a departmental outcome in many, many different disciplines. I know uh, it's, uh, critical thinking is in English, critical thinking is in biology. But of course, critical thinking will mean different things in those, in those different departments. And when it comes time for you to define what it means in your classes and your departments, you then have course outcomes. This is the last little slide in, in this, uh, as I said, brief PowerPoint. Um, the reason why I showed you all of this is because uh, in two years, by 2012, all colleges need to be at the proficiency standard for SLOs according to our accrediting body, the ACCJC. And this is, uh, these are, um, this is what that means. Number one, student learning outcomes on authentic assessment are in place for courses and programs and degrees. The results of assessment are being used for improvement. And down here, course student learning outcomes are aligned with degree student learning outcomes. How do we get that alignment? We map. And that's what I wanted to show you here. Now, as I say, I'm just going to show you uh, a couple of things that I've done. This is the Task Stream uh, login page. You get to it by going to taskstream.com. Every employee at Mesa, both contract and adjunct, has a Task Stream account. For most of you, your username will be the um, CSID number and the uh, password will be S D C C D E D U, all lowercase, no periods. For the vast majority of you, that will be your username and login to get into TaskStream. Um, for me, it's a little bit different, but I'm just going to go ahead and log into my TaskStream account. When you do that, you, uh, you get to your own workspace. And what you see here are the courses that I have taught most recently or will be teaching in the fall. And again, everybody sees um, his or her own courses 
on this workspace. So I'm going to go into one course that I have been working with a little bit, English 101. And uh, I just want to really show you that there is some standardization in task stream. Everybody is going to have this little thing on the left column. That is, there are some standing requirements, which, I, which we'll be talking about today. And then there are assessment cycles for the previous academic year, for this academic year, for the next academic year. Uh, for this workshop, we're really only going to be talking about the standing requirements. We're only going to talk, be talking about mapping uh, up here. And as I say, it's really um, pretty essential preliminary work before you actually go ahead and conduct the assessments and enter into the findings. We'll have another workshop about that uh, you know, in, in, a, in a couple of months. Right now, we're just really talking about uh, getting started. OK, so let's say I want to click on the mission statement. Not all departments, of course, will have mission statements. As it turns out, the English department does. What if I wanted to make changes to the mission statement? I can't imagine why I would. But if I did, I would have to come up here and check out that mission statement, much as you would check out a book from the library. And if I click on check out, that allows me to go in and edit. And then I have to check it back in again for somebody else in my department who might want to uh, you know, review what I've done or um, disagree with it. And of course, as soon as you can make any, um, any change at all on TaskStream, uh, there will be a log made of it. And you can make a comment on it. And you can have discussions with the other people in your department. It's much like a blog, really, that you can really talk uh, with the other people in your department. Again, something that you'll have to figure out. In, in your department or service area or administrative unit, are you going to let everybody have the, uh, access to, to test stream, uh, full access, full read, full edit capabilities? Or are you just going to uh, have one or two people be in charge of, of those um, capabilities and uh, have everything filter or funnel through them? There are uh, disadvantages and benefits to, to, to both ways. Again, up to you.